PCB Design Tutorials on PCBWay, where you can submit a PCB design related tutorial and get rewarded. It can be a video or a written article about PCB design, tips and tricks or your process, in any language you like. Each published submission will get you $50 to $100 in coupons and 500 PCBWay beans, with a chance to win up to $800 in cash and 2000 beans. So what are you waiting for? Oh, yeah, right, you're waiting for this video, of course. Welcome back. Um, a bit of a different video today. Um, I thought I'd bring you along with my test jig and my ESP32 touchdowns and show you how the process goes. I apologize up front for the sound. I just moved house and uh, this is an area that's being newly built, so there's a lot of build noises. And there's not much in this room at this moment, so it's a bit hollow, but it should be fine. So the first thing I do is grab one of these assembled ESP32 touchdowns. These are assembled by PCBWay, by the way. And I grab a screen and I have to make sure that the connector is open, both of them. This one's for the screen and this one's for the touch controller. And I slide the flex PCBs through the holes and plug it in, which is sometimes a bit fiddly, but the more I do it, the better I get at it. And close the connector. Now the next thing I do is place the ESP32 touchdown in the test jig, but I don't yet fix the screen because if there's a problem, it could be the PCB or it could be the screen. And this is an easy way now to just swap out the screen and test a new one. So I put it in its fixture. And by the way, let me get it out again. There's some, well, extensions over here so that the screen doesn't fall down. But I do need to be able to see the screen because I a want to know if the screen works and B, I need to touch it. And you'll see in a minute how I can see the screen and how I can touch it. Well, how I can touch it is obvious, this is open. Um, the next thing I do is connect this IDE connector that goes to the test jig. That is a Raspberry Pi, by the way, with a Pi hat I designed. And there's two load switches on it one for the USB, one for the battery. There is There are two INA219 current sensors, just for some extra monitoring, and a button. And the battery connects to one of these connectors, then goes through the low switch and comes out the other end. That also goes into the USB32 touchdown. This is an SD card. Actually, it's an SD card extender. In here, there's an SD card, and this is just a more easy way to just quickly plug in and pull out an SD card. The next thing I do is plug in the USB-C, and the only thing I have to do now is hit the button, and it will start testing. Now, on the computer, there is a Pipe opened up to an, a pipe, an SSA connection to the Raspberry Pi that is running a test script. And when I hit the button, the first thing it do, does is checks whether there's a good USB connection and if it can find the serial USB to serial adapter. If it does, it will upload a test sketch to the ESP32 touchdown and that sketch is listening to the serial connection between the Raspberry Pi and the ESP32 touchdown. And on the test script on the Raspberry Pi, it will send out some serial commands and then the ESP32 touchdown will know what to do. It has checked the screen. Now it's waiting for a touch. And when I touch it, it goes to the next test, which are the pins. 
Now the pins, they turn on and off one by one. And the test script is monitoring whether only one pin and also the correct pin is high at one time. After that's done, it will leave one pin high. It will disable the USB, enable the battery. Actually, it does it the other way around. It first enables the battery, then disables the USB. And then if the pin that is high is then still high, it knows that it didn't reboot and it successfully switched from USB to the battery connector. And the last stage of this script is flashing a free touch tech to the ESP32 touchdown. On the Tindy store there's an option you can have free touch tech pre-installed. And the last time I put some boards up on Tindy, most people said yes to that option. So I'm preparing myself and flashing most of them with free touch tech. And when it successfully does all its tests, it blinks the pass stages a few times and then turns off. And that's the moment I disconnect the IDE connector, the SD card, the battery, which is sometimes a bit hard, the USB-C. And then I put it off to the side and do the next one. But for this case, for this video I mean, I'll do all the next stages all at once so you can see how the whole process goes. The next thing I have to do is fix the screen to the board and I'm using some double sided tape for that. And normally I have my desk filled with all these pre-cut pieces of tape but I haven't done that now so I'll have to cut a few pieces. So I put a bit of tape on this side, making sure I don't exceed the length of the screen because otherwise some tape would be sticking out. And put a piece of tape pretty close to the flex PCB and two little pieces of tape over here for some extra stickiness. And then I have to peel off the well the cover of the tape, I don't know what that's called, which sometimes is very easy to do and sometimes very hard. This one was easy. This one was also easy. Going great so far. And the last one. Good, and now I manually line up the screen. And when it's lined up, turn it around, put some pressure on the board. And that's it. That's one ESP32 touchdown done. Now what I do before I pack them is put them in one of these ESD bags. Um, they come in an ESD bag from PCBWay and that's a pretty good ESD bag. But the problem is it does fit the PCB but it doesn't fit the PCB with the screen. And because I'm not immediately packing them, the reason being that I do not have the boxes yet which the ESP32 touchdown will go in. I have to store them somewhere and uh, I decided to store them in one of these ESD bags. And that is how an ESP32 touchdown is tested. I've done quite a few already and I'm getting pretty good at it and uh, putting some music on and just testing away. It's actually pretty fun to do. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the test jig or the ESP32 touchdown, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.